Thank you for joining Startups Opportunity hosted by T-Hub and Fukuoka City Global Startup Center. Mm -hmm. I'm Akiko from Fukuoka City Global Startup Center, today's MC. Before we start the meeting, I would like to ask one thing. Please keep your microphone mute and turn off the video during the event. Before sharing today's agenda, I would like, uh, I would like you to check the chat box. We post the link for the feedback form of today's event. So please give us a minute to fill it in before you leave. And we like to use the chat box interactive today. So if you have any questions, please put question on the top of the message and share it on the chat box. Also, we like to use this chat box as a networking place. So if you want to PR your project to all the participants, please put PR on the top of your message and you can share it once during the event. If you are interested in certain PR message, uh, please co uh, communicate directly in the chat box. So let me start with sharing today's uh, rundown briefly. So firstly, we'll explain general information of Fukuoka City Global Startup Center. And T-Hub will introduce startup ecosystem in Taiwan. And I'll introduce today's commentators. Today, we'll have one startup from Fukuoka and three Taiwanese startups. They are Smarty, Zima, JGB Smart Property, and Intim Hospitality Group. Uh, each startup will have 15 minutes for their session, 10 minutes to pitch, and 5 minutes for Q&A. So audience members can also ask questions in chat box, and we can ask them to the startup if uh, time allows. Uh, I'll like to start with the introduction of Global Startup Center. The Fukuoka City Global Startup Center is run by the city government. We are the contact window and executive unit for foreign startups and entrepreneurs. Our motto is a part of your team. Once you contact us, uh, we, we are your first team member in Japan. We work with you, we execute projects together. Even more, sometimes we do tasks on behalf of you. As you can see, our services are very wide range and available at any stage of your business. What I like to emphasize here is our unique uh, business matching. We have strong connection with not only startups, but also big companies. Moreover, we have good relationship with the local government and public organization as well. So we can arrange very specific business matching, not just introducing each other. And this business matching service is available for any startups. That means even you are in Taiwan, uh, without having a company here in Japan, uh, moreover, without coming to Japan, we are happy to offer our networks for you to find your potential partner. Let me introduce some of merits of starting business from Fukuoka when you expand your business in the Japanese market. The first point, is safety. Unlike the main big cities in Japan, like Tokyo, Osaka, uh, Fukuoka City is located on the side of Japan Sea. And we have less earthquakes, which means uh, we, we could say our location is safer than such big cities geographically. So that's why big, company, big companies have data center in Fukuoka. The second point is our location. Another geographic advantage is the cross distance with neighbor countries. Once you set up the business here, you have the market not only in Japan, it can be extended to Korea, Taiwan, and China. When you fly to Tokyo from Fukuoka, it takes about two hours. We can fly to Korea, Shanghai, Taipei as well. Fukuoka can be the gateway to Asian market as well. The next advantage is our startup ecosystem. Fukuoka is gradually known as the most popular startup city in, in Japan, since we have been building our unique uh, startup ecosystem for 10 years. We have many support for startups, 
and you can find them once you visit our startup hub called Fukuoka Growth Next. It's where Global Startup Center is located. Fukuoka City has a project that supports implementation of POC in the city. The last point should be compactness. Compared to the big cities, Fukuoka is smaller, but this is a big advantage of us. It's not crowded, less competitive, and because of, uh, because of that, we have strong community. Once you get into the community, it is very easy to make networks. Another point should be the cheap living cost. It's important for startups to save your living costs so that you can spend more for developing your business. So you can see how compact our city is. 10 minutes from airport to city center by subway and the import and important city function is centralized within five kilometer and the city is surrounded by rich nature, beaches and mountains. I would like to remark this point as well. Uh, we are cu uh, currently selected by the Japanese government as one of the candidate cities for competing to become Japan's next international financial center. The Japanese government is aware of not only our achievement in the startup field, but also the potential as a global city. So Fukuoka, uh, Fukuoka City has 15 partner institutions in 11 countries. We signed MOU to provide mutual support for startups in region. Uh, we have two partners in Taiwan, uh, Taipei City and Taiwan Institute of uh, Economic Research. So let me briefly introduce about startup visa. So generally speaking, when you live in Japan doing business, you need to have a business manager visa and there are some requirements to get that visa. However, it's very difficult to fulfill the requirements from outside of Japan. A startup visa is a six months to one year residence permit to settle down to prepare, prepare such conditions and to make sure whether or not the Fukuoka is the right place to start your business before you invest. Fukuoka City approves uh, the innovativeness and feasibility of your business plan, you obtain the startup visa. After the startup visa expires, most of the entrepreneurs convert them to business manager visa. So uh, we have a Canadian startup. Uh, they use 3D scan technology to offer the experience of mixed reality. Uh, they had collaboration with Fukuoka City Museum. And smart tip, uh, they are developing very smart tip. Well, uh, we'll welcome Richard from Smarty later for pitching. So you'll get more information from him. And let me introduce our business marketing as well. So DeskMe is a Finnish startup to develop desk reservation system for co-working space and offices. With their services, you can easily find a working desk and meeting rooms in your office uh, on your smartphone. We connected DeskMe with JL Kyushu, the railway company. We introduced DeskMe to JL Kyushu when they opened the co-working space in Hagata Station. Uh, which is the Fukuoka City's main entrance station. Uh, not only introducing, we uh, supported initial setting on behalf of DeskMe. And this co working space installed the system as a POC. After the collaboration with Q, we also connected with another co working space in Tokyo called Chick Space Haneda. They just introduced DeskMe to their facility last month. And this me is gaining local feedback and new networks through this POC. So Smart Pip is a Malaysian AI health tech company that develops automated uh, monitoring system for elderly and mm -hmm. patients. So it helps uh, it helps ease the strain on uh, taking care of the patient and senior residents. So we connected them with a company called Itzmo Smile, 
providing elderly care services, including managing many nursing homes for elderly. So it's a most mild showed interest in smart people to strengthen their current business and was willing to explore the partnership for expanding smart peep technology into the Japanese market. So we supported their communications and they just signed NDA at the beginning of this month and we will keep helping them to implement the POC. So as you can see, Fukuoka is a place you can start easy and start hard. So if you're interested in uh, business expansion in the Japanese market, we are happy to work with you. Okay, so next, I would like to welcome Tonia. Yes. Okay, so uh, let me introduce one of our mentors. We'll because today we have two mentors. It's our very important partner from Mosaic Venture Lab. So one of our mentors, Ken, he will uh, introduce T-Hub. So Ken, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, Sonia. So uh, Sonia, do you mind to bring up the, the slides? Um... Okay, so uh, hello guys. Uh, uh, I'm Ken, uh, one of the mentors at uh, T Hub. So today, uh, I'm introducing on behalf of uh, the T Hub's team. Uh, next slide, Sonia. So as as you know, T Hub as T is uh, it's so by far the largest uh, incubator center in Taiwan, and it's actually located around the north of uh, Taipei. Uh, wonder have you guys been to Taipei before? And uh, the name T means uh, Taipei, Taiwan Technology, Talent, uh, Trust, and, and Touch Points. And uh, hub means uh, we want this place to be the innovation hub, you know, uh, where uh, when people come to Taiwan, when entrepreneurs come to Taiwan, the first place they would think of in Taiwan, in, in Taipei, is to go to T Hub. Uh, to get certain resources and, and support in the in the startup ecosystem, and uh, this is actually uh, the whole heat up uh, establishment is also a very uh, successful uh, cases uh, in the Taipei city as this is a, pu a public private uh, partnership uh, is established by the Taipei city government uh, working together with the private sector the Honghui Group as a it's a it's a mega. Uh, real estate company in Taiwan, and uh, as well as E3. Uh, E3 is the largest uh, private research institution in, in Taiwan. Uh, next, uh, Sonia. Yeah, so uh, we actually base in uh, the north of uh, Taipei. It's uh, located in Neihu. So the concept behind is uh, pretty simple. Our job is to bring uh, the local Taiwanese startups uh, overseas and establish the uh, connection with the global uh, corporations, uh, pretty much like um, um, your, your uh, incubator as well uh, to get POCs, as well as to bring uh, foreigners and foreign international startups to Taiwan uh, to collaborate with the local SMEs and uh, corporations. And uh, we will also provide our resources uh, in terms of uh, talents. Uh, as you know, uh, the largest uh, semiconductor, as, as being the largest semiconductor manufacturing hub uh, in Asia, uh, Taiwan do have a lot of uh, engineers uh, and IC talents that can support uh, the startups in, in uh, uh, building the company and from technical aspect as well. And uh, we also do have uh, a lot of uh, venture capitals and uh, NGOs here to support in terms of uh, uh, angel investments or venture run investments. And uh, lastly, we will also invite uh, globally uh, the mentors uh, to support the companies here in Taiwan uh, through the mentoring uh, session. Uh, next. 
So this is a few pictures of our facilities in at T Hub. Uh, as you can see, we have like a uh, co-working space, and uh, we have a private office as well for our partners and for startups, uh, international startups. Uh, we also have multi-purpose meeting room for a uh, uh, minor demo day. Uh, also, we have networking area. We have showroom for uh, startup prototype uh, demo. And uh, we also have uh, casual spaces like a uh, cafe uh, for, for uh, uh, drinks and coffee. Uh, so I, I think the goal for T-Hub is to build a very cozy space uh, for all the entrepreneurs and the teams and, and for all the new uh, young people. Uh, next. So when, when you actually enter uh, T-Hub, uh, the, the, the first thing that you will see is on the right, we have this huge, uh, we call it the I stage. It's actually inspired by, by the theater design uh, that we usually have all the big events here. Uh, it can, uh, we, we can actually have more than 100 people here. And uh, it's actually a, a very big venue uh, to, to support most of our events. Uh, we usually put a lot of uh, demo days here. Uh, next. And uh, this is the digital studio. So uh, this we, we can actually use this studio to support uh, the CGI uh, animator solutions. So for most of the startups who wants to uh, do marketing or promotion, they could also utilize this uh, uh, digital studio. Uh, next. And we also have a uh, maker space in our hub. Uh, this is a 3D printing. We have all the machines and equipment for uh, 3D printing. So uh, for those who are in at the hub who actually utilize all these equipments and tools to, to run the, the prototype or, or certain development. Uh, next. And so far, uh, T-Hub was actually started in 2017. And uh, we actually got our first uh, committee meeting uh, in 2017 and 17. And we have 155 uh, applicants applied for uh, T-Hub and uh, 127 are approved. And uh, we finalized the contractual agreement with uh, 86 uh, 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 different entities. And uh, by far, we have uh, focused a lot on like AI, artificial intelligence, uh, IoT, uh, big data, uh, cloud computing, and uh, educational uh, services, uh, as well as digit and other professional services as well around, around hardware. Um, next. So uh, we support startups in different stages uh, because we would have like uh, startups from seed stage to uh, series A to growth stage to uh, IPO, pre-IPO stage. Uh, we will provide different supports and professional services such as uh, in seed stage, we will bring in early stage uh, venture capitals or uh, uh, angel investor to, to support with the financial modeling uh, or uh, to revise their pitch, their presentation, and, and so on. And for growth stage and pre-IPO stage, uh, we will then work with uh, a lot of the security houses in Taiwan uh, to help them for the IPO processes or the M&A uh, processes to, to get a, a, a exit for the, for the investors. Uh, next. And this is the international partners. Uh, I'm, I'm actually from Mosaic, as you can see on the right, uh, Mosaic Venture Lab. Uh, and uh, T-Hub has established very strong partnerships around uh, globally, uh, especially in the North America and Southeast Asia and in uh, Europe, uh, have all these strong partners to support uh, soft lending for the local Taiwanese startups. Uh, next. And uh, we have we will establish uh, annual event. Um, um, it's a it's a it's a Sarah event uh, every year uh, around November and or, or December. And we will invite uh, startups from different countries and and locally in Taiwan. And as well, we will invite uh, mentors from different countries to support this event. Uh, basically, is to exchange views and exchange technologies. Uh, around Taiwan and, and, and with the Silicon Valley. 
uh, we will also bring in people from Silicon Valley because uh, Taiwan is a very uh, hardware uh, focused country and and you know for all these talents and manufacturing capabilities we have uh, we can actually work together with the software uh, startup or software uh, talents in, in Silicon Valley to to enhance this whole uh, uh, structure and, and and this whole whole uh, process and we we also work with the Slovakia government uh, last year on an international level uh, we invited uh, the delegate the delegation from Slovakia uh, to visit Taiwan uh, corporates from Slovakia to visit Taiwan and to visit the, the startups and, and and ecosystem here uh, next. Uh, so this is the uh, a quick summary of the results and outcome. So so far we we in Taiwan we actually get a lot of supports from the angel investors as well as uh, we also get supports from the uh, national development fund. It's a national fund, uh, Taiwanese national fund, uh, raised more than seventy six million. And also in terms of resources, we work a lot with the local uh, mega corporations uh, to allocate. Um, uh, POC opportunities uh, between startups and 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 uh, the corporates. Uh, next, yeah. So, uh, in in a nutshell, we really hope that T Hub could be uh, a a innovation hub, uh, entrepreneur hub. That you know, when you know the Japanese entrepreneurs or uh, the American entrepreneurs, when they think of uh, starting up a company, when they come to Taiwan, the first thing, the first place that they would think of is the uh, Tea Hub, uh, because of the the you know very comprehensive uh, infrastructure here in Neihu Science Park, uh, as well as uh, the 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 strong talents and resources supports that uh, is given by the Taipei City Government, uh, and and our job is to help uh, start up. Uh, uh, scaled up very quickly and find suitable partners in Taiwan um, to do uh, uh, core development or uh, joint ventures. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, in a very quick uh, in a in a nutshell uh, the summary of T Hub. So, any questions? Okay, thank you so much, Ken. So if the, if the audience, if you have any questions, please put your question in the chat box, then yeah, we'll answer them. And also I want to mention that like, if uh, any staffs want to come to Taipei and recommend from you, we our uh, T-Hub can also offer free hard desk for two months. So if any staff want to come to Taiwan, please let me know if I'm in Taipei. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So now I'd like to introduce today's commentators. So from Fukuoka Global Startup Center, uh, we have Mumu, uh, the director of Global Startup Center, and Shun, and Yoshi here. So uh, Sonia, would you please introduce your team as well? Okay, uh, let me introduce uh, our partner, very important partner uh, from Mosaic Venture Lab. So the first mentor is Volker. So uh, Volker, can you introduce yourself? Thank you. <laughs> Volker, you are on mute. You are on mute, Volker. Yes, good, good afternoon. And greetings uh, to Japan. I'm Volker Heisterman. I'm a German American. And uh, before the pandemic hit, I actually used to travel extensively. And I've also attended conferences, startup investment conferences in Fukuoka. So uh, I enjoyed my time there. Uh, I spent the last 25 years in uh, Silicon Valley. I live in San Francisco and um, also in Taipei. Uh, my background uh, is uh, financial and business. I've worked in companies like Google, AT&T, and um, investment bank. And here in Taiwan, um, we have built the Mosaic Venture Lab program, which is focused on the transportation industry. And our corporate partners uh, include Continental, which is a large tier one, 
um, supplier, Audi and Volkswagen Group, just to name a few. And <clears throat> on the corporate side, um, also, of course, T-Hub, which is a really nice platform here in Taipei. It's state of the art. It's very, very modern, um, very enjoyable. And not just the, the venue is wonderful, but it's also the, the team is very, very supportive. Uh, I enjoy working uh, with startups on business development, especially corporate development strategies. And uh, we're currently in the process of raising a 30 million US dollar uh, venture capital fund as well, which will invest globally, not, not just in Taiwan. So my, my honor to be here. And I would love to come back to Japan as soon as you guys open uh, beyond the tour groups. Thank you, Boker. So, uh, Ken, can you introduce yourself? Thank you. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, I was uh, the, the the gentleman presenting the slides just now, and uh, I'm actually uh, I'm in the same company as uh, Volker, uh, Mosa Venture Lab, and uh, we uh, Volker pretty much covered all just now. Uh, but I actually started my career at uh, Yushan Ventures, uh, was founded by Volker Heisterman, and uh, we. We pretty much focus on uh, sourcing global uh, deal flow and technologies uh, for Audi, uh, the car maker, the luxury car maker Audi. And uh, as well as uh, after a few years, we co-founded the platform which Volker mentioned just now is the uh, EV accelerator. Uh, we focus a lot in uh, finding technologies that could uh, enhance uh, the EV supply chain, electric vehicle supply chain. Uh, and now we are also raising a new fund. Uh, we are expected to close in the next couple of months. Uh, it's an EV fund that we will invest also in um, EV and sustainability uh, related uh, companies. Uh, so yeah, hi, uh, good to see you all. Yeah. Okay, Sonia, um, switch it back to you. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm the comment. I'm uh the community director of T Hub. So also I saw like uh some men ask like how to connect with T Hub. So I also left my uh my email and my colleague's email on the chat box. So if anyone wants to come to Taipei, so please come to me. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sonia. So let's start the main session. So please welcome Richard from Smarty. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, just a second, let me share my uh, screen. All right. Uh, can you uh, see my PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Hi, this is uh, Richard from Smati. Uh, I'm a Chinese currently in Fukuoka. Um, let me introduce my, <laughs> what we do here. Uh, first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever used any smart home products? I think if you ever tried uh, one of those products, you will find that those products are not so smart. Um, actually, they requires that the users to be so smart. Uh, because you have to uh, first, you, you have to pair with your device, turn on the Bluetooth and uh, input your Wi-Fi password. And most, most of the time you don't remember what your uh, Wi-Fi password is. So it's really not that smart uh, or at least uh, not that easy to use. So we want to solve this problem. Um, our team uh, dedicated the research on the uh, SOC chip, which uh, has the built-in built algorithms. Uh, mostly the, the four main functions. Uh, the first one is speech recognition. It's, um, you know, everybody can see that uh, that, that function is uh, implemented in a lot of applications and products, but our speech recognition is, uh, um, not requiring the connection with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi because we built in the uh, 
model and the algorithm into the chip. So the speech recognition is for uh, recognize what the people are saying to the device. And uh, for and also we have the algorithm for the speaker recognition. That means we can train the device to recognize who is speaking to the device. And also we have the acoustic location algorithm built in uh, with a chip so that the device can decide where the people is talking to the device. And also uh, besides that, besides you talking to the device, we can use our applications, softwares to con communicate with the devices using data over sound uh, algorithm. That means you don't need to connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, only using encrypted sound waves to uh, trans transmit the uh, uh, commands to your device. So these are the uh, core technologies we're focusing on. Um, to, to make it uh, more clear that I can show you uh, through this slide that uh, we can build applications uh, like this. Uh, you're, you can talk to the device like uh, your smart light, smart switches, uh, cameras, so on. You just need to talk to it. You don't need to uh, connect to the Wi-Fi. You just talk direct to it. And also, if you want, uh, prefer using an app, you just open the app and press the buttons. That's it. There's no need to connect to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So uh, this is the what were the uh, main uh, application of our technology. Uh, for our company, we provide uh, the support for the hardware and the software design related to the uh, technology, what, as I just mentioned. And also, uh, if um, if you have some uh, just a general idea, we can provide with some solution consultation for for the whole project. And uh, and also, and if you are just having an idea and you don't you don't have a development team, you can outsource your whole project to us. We can uh, provide you with the uh, services uh, with the software and hardware de uh, development too. So that's the uh, basic introduction, but that, I, I know that's a little bit abstract. So I prepared a demo video of, of the applications of our technology. So let me introduce uh, the uh, different applications of our uh, technology in uh, some videos. Uh, but I know that uh, when, when sharing the, the screen, you will not be able to uh, hear the sound of the video. So I will explain uh, to you. So this part is data over sound uh, demonstration. This is the uh, uh, application I built uh, for, for controlling this circuit board. And uh, what, I, what I was showing in the video is that I turn off the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Then I just uh, press the button. You can see uh, this is a final product. One of our uh, 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 customers uh, built uh, this lamp and uh, using this uh, application, we only need to press the buttons. Then the, uh, the circuit board will receive a very uh, short and high frequency uh, sound wave, which is encrypted with the commands. Uh, actually, the, the uh, cell phone is playing that sound. So the, uh, the lamp will receive that sound and recognize it and then react to, to the uh, operations on, uh, in the application. Pardon. And this demonstration is uh, using uh, speech recognition. So I was uh, in the video, I, I was t uh, telling the, <laughs> this, I hand made this uh, lamp, uh, telling this lamp to turn on. Guangdong. Then turn off. Please turn on. Switch. Uh, this is the uh, bare uh, circuit board. Jaws. Ohio. And this is for demonstration uh, uh, using the uh, Japanese language, but. Um, I don't know if you can, if, I don't know if you can uh, hear the sound. Yeah, we can hear the sound. Okay, <laughs> that's better. And this one is using the uh, speaker recognition. So 
uh, the, this, the circuit board can uh, tell uh, if, it, if the sound is from his, its owner. And the other person is saying the uh, same commands, but the, the circuit board will not react to it. Password confirmation. Okay. Uh, that's that's it. That's the demonstration of our uh, the application of our technologies. Thank you very much. Okay. If you have any questions, I um, can uh, ask me or can feel free to contact me. Thank you. Hi, it's Wonka here from Taipei. Um, thank you for the presentation. And I'm actually a user of smart homes. Um, I uh, lived in Thailand a few years ago and it was very difficult to find any smart home devices. I bought them on Amazon from the US and even here in Taiwan, there's a, a Mi store. But in Asia in general, I can't speak for Japan, um, smart homes are not really popular. Uh, so one question is, where are you going to focus? Um, which market? But the much more important question is for me to better understand, um, how is your solution going to integrate with all the myriad of different smart home products that are out there? Like right now, I'm in the market to buy an indoor uh, sensor for air quality. And there are a lot of them that are only available for, for the Apple ecosystem. But I'm an Android guy, so I can't buy them. How are you going to overcome all of these, these uh, issues? Or are, are you going to sell your own uh, lamps um, and, and the whole kit? It's just a different way to connect. The last question, like, you know, I use Google Home and um, I say, okay, Google, turn off my lights. And then the routine runs or whatever, and it's all turned off. It's very similar to what you're doing um, with your um, sound, uh, the communication, not through Wi-Fi, but through sound. The, the end result is similar. Um, and I do agree the setup isn't necessarily the easiest, but you know, I, I was able to manage to set up myself. So I, I would argue that a lot of people can set it up, um, but it depends obviously on the complexity and on the person. So sorry, it's a lot of questions. I, I find yeah. it very interesting what you do, but I'm not clear on the product that you're actually building and selling and, and where you want to sell it. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for your questions. Those are sure. great questions. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, the first, the most important part is that um, our technology is uh, for the, uh, mm, you know, not not the, uh, not a replacement of the existing products. It's just a, an implementation. For example, uh, in our in, in our in, uh, demonstration, you can see that you can use our uh, uh, device without Bluetooth connection and a Wi-Fi connection. But uh, that doesn't necessarily say that we don't we we, we don't use that uh, because uh, we can provide a basic interaction with your device without even without any setup or uh, in, in cases that you don't have the uh, Wi-Fi connection or Bluetooth connection. So that's the uh, implement that that's the most important part not the uh, entire solution to replace the existing uh, products or it only adds more uh, function or a more easy to use uh, aspects of your product that's the first part the next one is that um, we are also uh, thinking about our um, position in this uh, in this industry because uh, at first we wanted to uh, cooperate with other companies that that manufacture or design those products. We provide this these technologies to them, not uh, not building our own uh, devices. That that at first we were thinking about that, but now we're also considering it if it's possible for us to build our own brands of uh, uh, products. Uh, but that requires us, uh, you know. Um, not only use our technology, maybe we need to implement our uh, technology with the existing ones with cloud-based uh, algorithms, like uh, using the uh, Google or uh, Alexa, uh, all those platforms. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah th thank you. Um, hmm. So uh, for, for the for the latter part, I can only uh, recommend not to build a hardware startup if you can avoid it. It's going to cost mm -hmm. you billions of dollars in marketing to yeah, get awareness yeah, yeah. for your products. So if you can stay away from that, but still, I'm I'm not clear clear to the first part of your answer. Uh, uh, like if I want to use the sound function, which I like, I think it's very smart that you use sound to command the devices um, without going through Wi-Fi, direct just transmit through sound but don't i need to um enable the devices then how if let's say i buy my tv um i i want to control my tv i want to turn on and off the volume um using your technology what do i have to buy do i have to still buy um chromecast uh, I mean, I need to put a sensor somehow on on the actual smart device in order for it to recognize sound, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I understand your question. Uh, let me uh, explain a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> because at this stage, uh, uh, we don't, um, you know, build the uh, final products of our, only using our product okay. uh, uh, technology. So this question depends on the product you by it, whether mm. it's uh, using uh. our technology or not. If the uh, product, uh, as you mentioned, a smart TV, uh, for example, if the smart TV mm -hmm. is using our uh, technology, maybe they can add our circuit board in the remote control, or they just only use uh, the, uh, the chip inside their TV set. Then we built an application. You can use your cell phone to communicate, or you talk to, to the t uh, telephone. Uh, TV. So it, it really depends on how the uh, manufacturer is using our technology. Let me uh, give you one more specific example uh, that, that I'm thinking about using the, uh, our technology to control the TV set. Uh, the final product may have cloud-based uh, uh, functions, uh, which are very common. Uh, I'm not going to repeat that. But if you just uh, bought the TV set and you uh, plugged in uh, your TV set, then you don't need to do anything. You can tell the TV set to turn off or turn off or uh, change a channel or things like that. Basic com uh, commands, not using the uh, cloud-based uh, technologies. So that's the basic functions we provide using our technology. But if you are you know, uh, more uh, familiar with the uh, technical uh, aspects uh, of, of all the products, you, you are easy, uh, you, you don't need to ask others to help you to set up the uh, uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Then you can uh, connect your TV set using the traditional, uh, not traditional, <laughs> uh, common way to connect your TV set to the Wi-Fi uh, or Bluetooth. Then you can use more uh, other functions but those are not related to our technology. So that's why I said um, uh, it's um, yeah, added a function to the existing products. Right, but so now let's say a Samsung, uh, you have to approach them to, uh, when they produce the TVs to then incorporate your technology. Mm -hmm. uh, why would they do that? Why wouldn't they just like build it on their own? Like, oh, it's a great idea to use sound. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, without Wi-Fi. Uh, so what's your barrier of entry, your defensibility of your IP? Um, I think if I want to uh, persuade them to <laughs> consider our hmm. technology, that uh, I would say that, uh, as I just mentioned in, in the first uh, slide of, of my par uh, uh, PowerPoint, that um, lots of people maybe most of the people, they are so um, confused with the uh, setup of a product. So I will say that if you, your product uh, has our mm. uh, technology within, you can reach right. more market. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's, that's understandable. But what I, what I meant is like Samsung has um, a little respect for patents from startups. They just uh, extinct you. Mm. Uh, hopefully it's not no Samsung executive on this call, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, I'm just using an example. Uh, and uh, yeah, so how, how do you protect yourself from... Uh, sorry for you know, interrupting, like, because uh, it's time. 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. sorry for interrupting, but it's time. So if you have uh, more questions, then we can, uh, we can arrange another meeting. Yeah, after okay. this evening, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much, Richard. And you have one question in the chat box. So would you please answer it later? Ah, oh, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, you, like, oh, so no, so I, I can uh, answer uh, you, so using the to, uh, text. Yeah, please text message. Me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so next I would like to welcome Zima. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hey. Um, let, me, let me share my screen. Um, here. Cool. Um, can you guys hear me and see the screen? Yes. yes. Cool. Let me. Okay. Uh, my name is Jennifer. Uh, I'm based in Taipei, so I guess I can. Uh, catch up with guys at T-Hub uh, sometime next week, I guess. Um, okay, so social, uh, me, uh, Zima is a social platform that uh, allows people to train their own AI psychic for their social life. And how do they do that? They simply just post stories on the map. This is actually our screenshot of um, our app. Um, and by chatting slash meeting up with people all over the world. So we're basically allowing users to use their own social data to train a social Jarvis, quote unquote, for themselves. So um, the avatars that you're seeing here um, is what we are kind of allowing users to stick with us and they can visualize their effort and time um, putting in on our platform and they can see their avatar grows. Um, and we we actually uh, we are looking for like a wide range of partners and investors right now. Um, we have a strategic partner, L Magazine. Um, they're gonna we haven't done any marketing yet actually. So we launched la last summer and we've gained some tractions in Taiwan. Um, so what we want to do next is to bring in uh, marketing partners. Um, some Web3 uh, mechanisms to really in incentivize users to be more active on, on our app. Also, we we're looking for partners in Japan since um, we always thought that our, you know, our mechanisms, how we design it, and, you know, we're allowing, allowing users to kind of grow their own avatar. It's really uh, similar to Tamagotchi since, you know, Japanese, you guys invented that awesome uh, game. So we think it would be a really cool market uh, for Zima to go to since, um, you know, we, we well, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the term social to earn. So like in the Web3 world, um, people are kind of excited about, you know, when you use a product, you can actually reward you with something else. So you earn something, whether it's a token or, you know, for us, it's avatar growing. Um, so, besides from what the the product is is giving you, like as a service, you can also earn something else. So that's uh, the whole concept of it. So we're kind of gamifying um, social experience uh, when you meet when you want to meet someone new. You can go onto Zima and you can see who who's free, who posted around you, and you can talk to them. You can ask them out. Meanwhile, you have this. Um, avatar of your own and the more you use the app the more it evolves so that's the basic concept of what we're doing here um, a quick introduction about um, our investors and our uh, partners that going to promote the app for us um, l magazine is you know influential media um, they're gonna promote us and kind of stream their resources um, to help us grow globally they have, you know, connections to celebrities, to brands. Um, we're gonna, the, the way we're gonna generate revenue is we're gonna allow users to purchase virtual assets for their avatar pet, right? So virtual assets, uh, that's where L can come in and bring all the resources, um, their, you know, KOL connections, and we can sell the, the virtual assets together. I'm gonna split the profit with them. Um, the below logos, there are investors. Um, Omelette Arcade, they uh, they invested in us because they want to 
they want to explore the possibility in Web3 um, and in social apps. So they are actually a mobile game streaming platform. They have 70 million users globally, which is amazing. Um, most of the users are below 20. So super young teenagers are using their app. Um, the founder of Amla Arcade um, is one of our investors. He's going to help us to grow, grow globally, grow, growth hack, and kind of acquire younger users for, for our app. Um, Lutex is uh, one of the fastest growing NFT platforms. Um, if you guys are in the NFT world, um, you'll know. So OpenSea is the biggest one, and there are a lot of small ones coming, coming up. Uh, Lutex is one of them. They closed a $9 million uh, raised, uh, I think six months ago, um, they invested in us because all of our avatars and virtual assets can, can turn into NFTs. So we're next up, we're going to allow users to not only use their time to grow like a cute avatar, which is one and only for everyone. Optionally, they can make this into their own NFT. They can sell it. They can make money off of it. But it's optional, you know, if so our users are super attached to your avatar, so it, they might not want to trade it. But if, if they want to, we have the options for them to do that. So Lutex is one of our investors and partners. Um, so uh, in the future, if we're going to uh, run any NFT campaigns and collections, they're going to help us grow. Yeah. So um, who's so who who's on our platforms right now? So if if you go to app, so we only have iOS right now. Android will launch in two weeks, I think. Um, so you, if you have an iPhone, you can go onto App Store and type Dima. Um, you can see there are a lot of people posting in Taiwan already on the map. Um, you can find me on the map. I post it. I'm a balloon. My avatar is a balloon. My avatar is this one. Um, so. Our user base is, is quite young too. So half of the users are below 24 years old. The other half is below 34. Um, most of them are, well, they're kind of artistic and creative. So these are the, the diversity we have. Um, users usually go on to our app when they cannot sleep. So our most active time is actually in midnight. So right now we don't have the, the most users on, on, on the map yet on, on our app because they're working or they're at school but um, during midnight there's there are a lot of people so that's that's uh, what we have so far and these are the screenshots of how users are super into their own avatar they would like so these are the actual screenshots so if you go if you go onto the map and just kind of click on any post you'll see like in their bio they can basically type anything, but a lot of them would kind of make a journal of how, like the, the growth diary of their own avatar, which is crazy. I didn't even do that, but they're like raising their own child. They're, yeah, so that's just to share how um, how attached they, they are to, to, this, to this little thing. Um, and then another thing is since, you know, we, we are kind of like, an app that allows you to meet new people, right? So you can imagine one of the biggest reasons for people to meet new people is you want to find a date. So, you know, find boyfriend, girlfriend is one of the biggest reasons. Um, a lot of our users will be looking for roommates. So if you, you know, roommates, um, new job, um, just someone to, to grab a coffee with, someone who, you know, if you're bored right now, you want to find someone to have a drink, people do that on Lima. So it's super instant because we allow people to set a super short time uh, when they post something on the map. So if you miss this person in an hour, they disappear. Right. So we actually have a lot of that action going on. We do have users start dating each other. Because of Lima, we do have users find their BFF like two girls, they're, they live in different cities, but they they met each other on Zima. They've been chatting for months um, and they would write us a thank you note saying that, you know, because of Zima, she found her best friend. Um, we get a lot of that. So we really, we, we're a neutral app. Um, we'll, we won't say we position ourselves as a dating app, but a lot of people do use Zima as to, to find a date. Um, just to just to clarify the, the intention. Uh, sorry for interrupting, but we have only five minutes. So okay. 
we like to move for the Q A session. So sure. actually, uh, I and Yoshi we downloaded demo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you have two users here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and uh, uh, so you mentioned the partners in Japan. You're looking for the partners in Japan. So what right. kind of partners uh, are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, a range of it. Let me scroll to the page where we this is a long okay here um so we are fundraising um so we are looking for you know good vcs and partners to help us grow um we're also looking for partners that or platforms that brands that already have a global user base base we, we believe that you know cooperating with uh, other brands and platforms that already have you know sim similar uh users that that we were we're looking for is is a better way to to grow um instead of just throwing money at marketing costs you know that's for, for a startup i don't think that's uh reasonable uh, so that um, we already found you know crypto exchanges and and as platforms as our investors but you know there's we're always welcome if you guys have uh, extra you know connections to that we're also looking um for community influencers uh, by community um, well, different, right now we have different worlds, right? We have Web3 crypto world, uh, community influencers, and we do have, you know, Instagrammers and, and all that, TikTok influencers. So we're looking for, for both to work with us since we're a social app. Um, we have um, different resources that we can exchange with them um, for, for working with us. Um, Growth Hack Accelerator. Um, for, for us, Omelet Arcade, one of our investors would be one example. They do have um, a successful example of how to grow globally, rapidly, um, within, with, without like a, a huge marketing cost. So we would love to connect and you know, discuss and learn from brands or, or founders who have had that experience. Um, we would love to chat, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your user base? Sure. Um, what do you want to know? How many active users do you have? What's the growth oh. been? Uh, blah, yeah, blah, blah, um, blah. To totally. So we launched last summer and without any marketing, we now have over 20,000 users, mainly in Taiwan. Um, and the active rate will be 10%. Thank you. Uh, it's, by the yeah. way, it's very. I've invested in dating apps in the past. It's uh, in Taiwan <laughs> and beyond, and uh, <laughs> your midnight midnight user base does ring a bell. Uh, yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's a very interesting, uh, very um, very progressive approach. Also, your pitch deck is quite unique. So yeah, I think you have a lot of potential. Building social networks, um, as you already figured out, you need to right. have the growth hackers. You don't have billions uh, and right. marketing dollars to grow this. So right. Uh, it's you know it's a hit or miss, and we'll we'll see where this goes. If you have the right partners, and uh, yeah. certainly have the right messaging, and yeah. I can see this uh, very <laughs> interesting for Japan actually. So yeah, congratulations! Yeah. It's nice to see this coming out of Taiwan. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll leave my uh, contacts and uh, at the in the chat room, and you know if anyone's interested, you can connect with me. I can send my pick check to you, and we can chat more. Since I think it's almost time to come up, I guess. Anyone has any other questions? Hi, Jennifer. I understand you have a couple of partners in Taiwan, but now we are talking about your you know, Japanese business in Japan. Right. Okay? So maybe you, you don't have to have a sort of duplicate partner in the same area. So that, do you have any forecast on the, the you're saying the product for the Japanese market? Well, um, the way we design it is 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 ready for international markets. So if you look at you know how we structure the, the interface, so like our UI UX is super simple, and now we have two languages: we have English and and Chinese. Um, but to go into Japan. Uh, the Japanese market, we figure we, we need uh, like a third language. But if you look at how we design um, the avatars and the, the look and feel of it, um, we purposely make it uh, without any culture. 
like if you look at these guys, you wouldn't feel like this is designed and like created by like a Taiwanese or like an Asian culture, right? So, so our purpose is we we're gonna penetrate all cultures, and we hope like when we go global, any culture like an Indian guy, Japanese guy, American, European, when they look at the avatar, um, all of the kids that would be they would relate to it. They would feel like this, this is my path. This could be my path. I could love it. And I would, I'm willing to spend money, buy stuff for it. Um, so I, I feel like, I, I'm, I mean, that's a, that's a good point. Like if you guys, you guys are Japanese and when you look at our app, our product, if you think there's something missing to, to go into your market, we'll love to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But Jennifer, maybe we are able to find a sort of a partner. But maybe you, your answer is I'm asking. So, they, so what, what do you want to eat for the dinner? You you are saying that Italians okay, Indians okay, Chinese okay. Oh, Japanese also great, right? But but we have to decide, yeah. Right, so, right. Okay, and, so we, right. we need a sort of a priority. Okay? Right, right. But we think we that, think Japanese is is one of the the most suitable market is because no, I I've had my tamagotchi when I was a kid and we love it yeah. and we, we haven't had that game or that that toy for for 20 years yeah yeah and, jennifer and yeah. maybe you can think about us we need a sort of a priority uh, right. according to your business plan for japan and uh, just just synthesis mail due to the time right but it, it's great for that thank you jennifer thank you jennifer because it's time so after this event, uh, maybe you can send us the, the focus field in the uh, the partners in Japan, yeah. so that we might be hope to find your potential partners here. Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Okay. So next, uh, JGB Smart Property. Are you ready? Yeah, ready here. Okay. Can can view my desktop oh, yeah we can yes. see you okay we great. can see you okay hi everyone <laughs> good afternoon so yeah today uh i just represent jgb smart property i'm the ceo of joanna um we target yeah. ourselves as uh, your best partner to manage rental property to manage your rental property yes this is the deal we are doing in the property business and we try to make the automation of to manage the rental property no matter it's in fukuoka in japan in osaka or in taiwan or in south city asia uh, we are a global system and actually we already have a global client not just based in taiwan but in philippines and vietnam so we are talking about mm, probably our system could also provide our service and a solution for japan market okay so let's do it so far, our six core features, including 720 degree VR property advertisement, yeah, and embedded with the e list contract. When we talk about e list, it's combined with e signature. As we understanding, uh, uh, after COVID 19 and the new new normal that uh, in Japan market, uh, government also target try to uh, adapt the e signature uh, than it used to be. Because used to be we need to use stamp in Japan, but now at the moment we understand Japan government also try your best to to adapt the e signature in all the documentation. Yeah, this is what we do with the uh we have the e signature combined with the lease contract. Okay, and we also provide a financial analysis online, and it's a real time data to provide analysis for the managers. And we have a feature to manage the tenants and a member, your team member, and also tenants might repair, uh, report some repair issue, so they could have these online repair orders directly. And we also combine with the smart lock and the smart meter. I would say a smart meter is electricity meters and uh, some IoT devices, then we can control our property remotely. Yeah, for example, we remove, we open a door or calculate the electricity meter and the bills remotely. Yeah, this is very essential after after new normal, after new uh, after COVID-19, then we can manage our property maybe in different city with the efficient way. 
this is our core feature. Okay, so our target is a residential market. As we understand in Japan market, residential market for rental market is a huge one. It's more than 70% is for rental market. So this is our target rent, uh, target market. It's different from office, different from hotel. It's a different solution from hotel. So this is how this is our way. And now you can see that our how we position ourselves. You can see that I believe everyone knows Zillow. Zillow, they are uh, doing the listing listing platform for the property advertisement in U.S. North America, and back in back is in uh, China market, and uh, in South in Asia, uh, there's a um, giant called Property Guru, and they recently go to North, uh, go to North America to have a listing. So this is a property tech company. They are dealing with the uh, advertisement, but however, JGP Property, we are dealing with the property management. It's different from the marketplace, different one. So what we do is uh, our competitor in North America called Appfolio is also one of the Nasdaq listed company uh, and also have a competitor in uh, in China. But we, are found, we found that uh, in Asia, I mean in Southeast Asia, there's no major player in this field. That's why we target ourselves um, in Taiwan, but uh, provide cross-border solution. This is a, what they didn't provide. They only provide a solution for uh, individual, I would say like single country, single country. So this is our advantage. And actually we also, at the moment, we also have a Japanese company, one of the Japanese company using our system at the moment to manage their Japanese uh, property in Japan, in Taiwan, and in Vietnam, okay? So this is our target market. When we talk about the population, uh, popular renter, we say global renter population, and then we focus it uh, in Asia, in Asia population. And we understand under this population, uh, uh, 58,000, 58, 000, uh, 58 million population for the renter. So uh, this is a huge market. So this is our target market. And uh, we provide a SaaS platform. It's a sub by the subscription fee. So we provide, we can, uh, for this market, a property management system for the annual annual revenue could be, in this market, could be generate more than 1 billion per year. Yeah, this is our target market. Yeah, okay, so at the moment, at the moment, JGB Smart Property established since 2018, and now it's uh, for it's uh, around four years, and um, we already have the major clients, including Taiwan government and the major uh, real estate agency. This is one of the chain, uh, one of the major real estate agency in Taiwan, and some SME small and media enterprise company. Yeah. And also some of the co-working space, also one of uh, our client category. And we also have, uh, just what I say, we have a cross-region real estate agency using our system. Why are they using our system? Because we provide a multi-language and multi-currency for the cross-border solution. Then, for example, this this agency they, they are located in uh, Malina in Philippines and Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. But the layer investor, I mean property owner, the agency provide use our system to serve their local tenants, local tenants as well as their investor. Their investor, some of them from Japan, some of them from Korea, some of them from China or Hong Kong. So this layer investor is globalized. So that's why they're using our system to provide a service for both of their tenants and their investors. Okay, so uh, like to, uh, here you can see our traction. Um, this is a, um, our units. There's more than more than 10,000 units under our system management. And you can see our gross pass, and uh, as eighty percent located in Taiwan and the metro metropolitans, and uh, more than twelve percent is located different cities in Southeast Asia. Yeah, and then we also what we say about that we engage with IoT devices. One of uh, Esther, Esther is also one of our partner to provide an IoT solution. Um, the, we also engage with a fintech. This is a major banker in Taiwan. Yeah. So uh, how we talk about the uh, business opportunity, because we understand uh, most of uh, the real estate agency uh, are small and medium uh, size enterprise. And this is why we provide a SaaS platform by the subscription fee. So this is a really good uh, chance for us to serve on the whether it's from Japan or Taiwan or Southeast Asia.
Yep. And then you can see this. Uh, this is uh, all the roles in our system. The, uh, the one agency firm, our property management firms, they are the, uh, they are the player, or we say they pay the fee, subscription fee to JGB system. And then they use uh, our sorry system. Sorry for interrupting, to... but it's time. So can we uh, move to the QA session? Okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for your uh, presentations. So I have questions. So I thought the, the on your slide, so there's no competitors. There's no competitors in this field. But I think that this the property rental market is very huge. So I guess that there's some of the similar uh, uh, similar product services in the market. Uh, uh, can you tell about the similar product? No problem. Okay, no problem. So I'll give you an example that uh, most of uh, uh, actually I, uh, we understand that our competitor in uh, Japan or in Taiwan, for example, but uh, most of, the, of, of our competitor, they didn't provide a cross country solution. So most of, uh, for example, actually there are some similar uh, competitor in Japan, like JGB solution for a rental market, but uh, the, the differentiation will be uh, JGB provide the cross border solution. Uh -huh. So that's why uh, we can allow the property mine located in different, not just Japan, but uh, the owner or investor like remote control or managing the property overseas. This is the way uh, and our advantage. Okay, so the advantage, uh, so you, your services providing the cross-border cross services. Yeah. Okay. yeah, exactly, exactly. And also that I was wondering, the, so could you elaborate about the, why the co-working space can use the, your, pro, your services? Yeah. I like your question, thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, the co-working space, they also have to manage multiple tenants and multiple contracts, right? And some of the like a, a vertical contract and some might be tenants located or uh, have a physically offices or meeting room, something. So that's why co-working space, they use our system uh, because it's uh, actually for them, uh, some of, our, for example, some of our clients, they, they have the property, some of the property for the residential service, some of the property, uh, low, I mean, lower floor, lower floor, they provide a co-working space to uh, the audience or to the tenants. So that's yeah. why they, it's a multi-solution, but uh, they use the same system, JGP system, to manage the upper floor for residential, lower floor for co-working space. Okay, thank you for, yeah, for the explanation. So in the case, if the, the, the company, if the company running the co-working, uh, like they're running the co-working space, so do they also use it? Because you mentioned that it's the part of the residence and co-working space, then it's uh, that applicable, but it's, they are running only co-working space. How, how is your, uh, the services working? Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, for example, for example, like this, I give you an example. So for, uh, yeah. Yeah, this. So no matter it's a co-working space operator or uh, like a rental property, a rental residential property mm -hmm. operator, they, what they need to understand is their cash flow. And they need to understand how many uh, bills or how many this contract will going to expire in next three years, something. So they need to forecast the rental cash, right? Rental cash. So this this because we have a lease, online lease, and then the lease will generate a bill uh, mm -hmm. rec repeatedly then we can calculate in advance for them to supervise uh, their performance something. And then we can supervise their vacancy. If you really take a look at this one, they could, uh, they could supervise the vacancy status and leasing ongoing or is off the market or on the marketing. Yeah, that's why then what they need is a data analysis. And this is what we provide them. Oh, I say thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, two things, the first, Maybe we can set up another session. To, to, can you show us a sort of a demo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, mean to, you mean at a moment not, or not, you mean not, another? Not today, session? not today, okay. yeah, okay. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, uh, have a, yeah, we have a demo site and uh, yeah. Yeah, no yeah, 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 but, but anyway, so this is you know, maybe another day. Yeah, yeah today sure. is Friday, yeah. yeah no so problem. Yeah, everybody has appointment for the Friday evening, right? And uh, another question, for example, my company or myself has some property, okay? Yeah. But it, simply speaking, it, I, I have only three property. You can yeah. say, that, oh, I can use that. However, maybe I, in practice, I don't need it. Can you tell me 
how many properties, so in case how many properties I own, it will be very workable. Anderson, I say that uh, even uh, our, our clients, even they only have a three property or three rooms for rent, they could use our system as well. No problem. Just uh, we, call it, we call it like individual owner. Yeah, individual I know, owner. but, 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 it, but it, if I all have only three, I will not introduce this system. Okay. Uh, exactly. Right. J yeah, that, that, that's why the, I, I just want to have a very you know, feasible numbers. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, so for example, uh, I I will divide it to uh, I will have a two two kind of answer. First of all, that the, our major co clients they manage around each co each company manage around hundred two hundred units to thousand units each company. Uh -huh. So this is our majority majority. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And um, and then we sell at the entry barrier. Most of our clients. Once they manage more than 50, by zero, 50 units, then they will thinking about to use system. Okay. Below, yeah, below yeah. 50, they might think about, I still can manage it, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. right answer, thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you so much for your presentation. So uh, we'd like to see them also. I'll send you the email to uh, arrange the another meeting. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we have the today's last presenter, presenter in Team Hospitality Group. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's my. Uh, it's so honor to be here to share with you guys and what we were doing here in Taiwan. Okay. Our company is called Intim Hospitality Group, and we kind of want to uh, achieve a goal that integration, those systems for um, individual and the small chain hotels to achieve their dream. And we have a strong relationship with uh, one of the biggest integration system, hotel integration system in the United States called SHR. Okay, simply what we are providing to our client is two, two services. One is CRM, customer relationship management, and also IMS is revenue management for hire. Okay, for uh, CRM, we, we, are not, we are the most robust hus hospitality CRM system in the industry, and we are adopting um, SHR's technology to do that. Okay, there are numbers I wanted to share with you guys in Taiwan. So there are probably uh, 13,000 hotels and b, b in Taiwan, but every year those hotels are hosting average 14,000 clients, but no, none of them are be remarketed. So the remarketing rate is zero. They are simply only send the emails to them to thank you for their coming. So remarketing rate in Taiwan is, uh, is almost 0%. So we wanted to change this situation. So our CIM is to providing a client data management. We, we, we are kind of clean, data cleaning for the hotel. They, they are not capable or have no resource to do that. And also we provide a reward program like IHG or uh, Marriott program. So give them some kind of reward for them to coming back again. And also we are, we are tag those kind of people, those kind of clients into each group. And we have marketing campaign for them to ask them to come, come again or give us a good review. So this is kind of a good circle for, for the CIM program. And this is kind of like um, the advantage for our system compared to some third-party third party booking platform like booking.com and uh, Agoda. The, the most differential with those kind of platform is the, the, hot, the member is still in within the hotel group. And, but for some of the third-party booking platform, the, the gas is owned by the OTAs, like online travel agents. It's not, not the hotel's customers or members. 
Okay, and our 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 goal is to combine multi properties for small chain or some aligned uh, hotels. They wanted to have more power to get the, their clients together to build a, a kind of like a small chain by using our program. And we will have those those uh, client pool together to to remarketing them uh, in our ways. Okay. And other services we, we are helping our clients is revenue management. Um, our, our system is provide, uh, using ex existing data and also some marketing data and use kind of our algorithm to calculate one um, best computable rate for this, market, for this hotel on, on the market. Okay, so we are applying the big data and, and the decide based compatible rate for the hotel and to achieve hotel's goal and maximizing their revenue. That's, that's our goal to do that. And we are not providing just a system for them to, to use. We are kind of work, work with them through those kind of settings since it's really, um, really hard to difficult for, for an individual hotel or uh, BNB owners to do that. So we, we kind of help them to do those kind of setups. Okay, here, here's are the international booking res reservation volumes. They are getting more and more. So our, our system also integrate all the, uh, all the online channels such as Agoda, booking.com and Expedia. And we, we will push that rate we calculate to those kind of, those channels and here are the situation or difficulty in taiwan i think it's also in other other countries all over the world it's lacking of directing direct reservation for those uh individual or small hotel they they are over relied on the third party platforms so they they get a, they, they pay a lot of commissions to those platforms it's about 15% per each reservation. So it's a lot. And also the rate penalty issues. Every channel has different um, rate and that cause the algorithm, algorithm for the, the OTA channels, they are putting your, your listing um, back, not, not in the first or second page. Okay, and also the inventory diversity. It's it's some, uh, for example, they will have one, one inventory in on booking.com and one inventory on Agoda. So it's hard to manage those inventories. So our system is to combine those together and easier for them to um, manage them. And, and the, the last two is about the, the cost for hire. So um, I know in hotel industry, it's really hard to hire per people that, um, um, with uh, with a company for very long, they they kind of like higher um, entry entry level employees. So they are not those employees are not capable and no have no knowledge for management those um, those channels, which brings them um, most of the the revenue form. So so that's that's something we can help them to to fix these, these problems. So also the, the label cost is getting higher and higher. Even, even in Taiwan, the, the, the minimum rate is, get, is growing. So uh, we can save some uh, label fees for them, for the hoteliers. They, they kind of, we are, we are outsourcing their revenue services. Okay. And here are, are some cases. So. It's a three-star hotel in Ilan, and year YOY growth rate of forty-five after uh, after using our re revenue management system. And also, it's a four-star hotel in Tainan, and YOY growth is fifty percent. Okay, and also we have achieved the the highest uh, revenue per month. So two years in a row. For the month of the new year, we we have one million revenue, which they have not seen that numbers before for like a decade. Okay, so here is my presentation, and mainly 
uh, I think Taiwan and uh, after the pandemic, Taiwan and uh, Japan are, are very close even um, if on the travel. So we, we have a lot of inbound and outbound travelers for each other. So some, somehow so I think we, if we can connect the hotels um, to, to Japan, that, that will probably have some opportunity for us to, to grow in our business to, to Japan. So here's my presentation. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Okay, so uh, I have uh, some uh, few questions. So first question is about that. You said that your main, mm, main potential customer client will be the small chain hotels. Is it, is it correct? Individual and small chain. Yes, yeah, small chain. Uh, individual, individual as well. Yeah. Okay. I see. So, but the, I couldn't understand why the individual hotel needs to use the, your services. Okay. Because individual hotels, they are lacking of some knowledge and the resources to, to pop, uh, for example, they, they are not capable to hire a knowledgeable uh, management ma manager to, to management their rates. On, on those channels. So we, we can help them with a little fee. They, they, are, they probably will um, spend less than a, a manager's fee to help them to integrate their rates on all the channels. Okay, so then I also have another question. So if I have hotels, mm -hmm. so I can use a US system so instead of the our uh, booking.com. So if I use the, your systems, I don't need to use the our book, book, booking.com. Oh, no, no. Um, they they are still need to use booking.com, but but we are kind of a, a, a central reservation system to, to connect those channels. And we have one pool of in inventory and uh, rates. We will have the rates and inventory pushed to those channels as one, not, not diverse. Yeah. Okay, I understand that your system is like, it's kind of the supportive system for the hotels. So in addition to the, the existing system, so it is not the alternative system. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Open system for the marine system, but not open system for the booking system. Okay. Yes. Um, just uh, Heinz Walker here. Uh, uh, two, two things. If you want to go international, um, you should uh, have your deck in English and not 80% in Chinese. Uh, just a little side recommendation. Uh, but how much does it take for one customer to join your platform? Uh, how long does it take to onboard um, one of those small hotels? And how much do you spend on that? Salespeople, you know, how do you scale this? I mean, can't go, go from, can't go from door to door, uh, educating them and so on. It seems like incredibly laborious for little revenue at the end. These are small hotels and one by one is um, hard to scale in my opinion, but I'm curious about any numbers. How long does it take you to onboard a hotel on average? And then what's the revenue that you generate from that hotel and how much do you spend? So time and money to get somebody signed up to be a customer and then how much actually you generate in terms of revenues from that customer? Okay, it, it's a really good question. So, so basically, uh, for to to our experience, it can be less than two days to to join our platform, but depends on how how many rooms or how many room types. Since we have to to map in their room type to those channels, so so it it really depends on on the the type of the hotel, and also. Um, um, speak of how how much we are going to spend. It's a really quick question. It's it's kind of like we have to educate the the front desk agent or the the sales management to use our platform. But but um, I, I I will say that um, we are not spend a lot of uh, money on sales. It's in in this stage we are getting word for mouth what for mouth um, recommendations or referrals from our existing customers. Yeah, so, so not, not, not much we're spending. And we also have some relationship with um, some hotel associate. 
and we we have some speech on in the in some 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 workshop and they are interested we i would say we, we are not spend too much on on sales for now great thank you thank you i think so when you approach the hotels the hotel already had their own system in most of the cases Correct. So how did you approach, how did you ask hotel to use your system and abandon the the existing system? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's a really good question. So, so simply our system, since it's international and over, over, worldwide, and we have connect to most of the major PMS, which is property management system, we have already connect with with, with them already. So they are not abandoning all of the system that they are using right now. So they, they can keep their property management system, but using our, our platform. So here's what we were, were telling our clients. If you use our system to grow your rate revenues, so the revenue will cover the old, old system you are using. So, so that it's really depends on the revenue. So if we can grow their revenue, they, 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 that, that's not a problem with abandoning their old systems. Yeah, we might be able to talk to the hotel, but we need to, you know, we, we need to digest your idea. So the, the I understand so that if the hotel uses the system, they can get, and get more money. I understand but how, what, okay. Uh, actually, we, we wanted to know more detail, not today. Okay, today okay. is a Friday evening. Everybody has an appointment. Okay, thank you. And, yeah, yeah, but 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 yes, maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll send you an email. So read uh, arrange another meeting. Thank you. To understand, yeah, your services better. Okay, so thank you so much for uh, your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we are done with all the program for today. So thank you so much for joining today's uh, event. So after this event, I'll send you the feedback form. Uh, so please answer the forms and give us your feedback to improve our online event. So if you have any additional questions to the startup or global startup center or T-Hub, uh, please let us know with the form. Thank you again for your time and see you soon in our next event. Thank you so much.